All right. Um, Christmas has arrived early, everyone. It's not because Jason Kenney was just on the program. It's because the liberal bad boy strategist is here. And he's brought his naughty and nice list. He is a Sun Media contributor and the author of Fight the Right, a manual for surviving the conservative apocalypse that's coming. I always boot that. I'm sorry. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> liberal strategist Warren Kinsella joins us here in our Toronto studio. Is Jason Kenney on your... Winners and losers list. I, it was interesting. I mean, you watching. guys are so close. Yeah, right? we're very tight. <laughs> he looked. He looked tired. He looked a little tired. Well, can you blame him? And he, well, no, because he's, he's uh, had this flurry of announcements. Um, you know, he, I mean, here he is, right up until everybody else is off at Christmas parties, and he's making yet another announcement. I think this is the second one in the space of a week. And um, so, what's going on there? And because nothing happens in Ottawa without a reason. So he's certainly getting a lot of airtime. He's out there a lot, um, you know, and so I guess this gives rise to people wondering about his leadership ambitions. Yes, indeed. Um, but again, I return to the question, is he on your winners and losers list? Who's on your winners list? Let's start there. Uh, the winners list, I would need to be reminded of this, but I okay, think I've the prime minister, have you got it? Yeah. Uh, the, the, can we put the graphic up? There you go. Can you uh, see it there on your monitor? I had thought the Liberal Party of Canada, number one, um, would get less noticed. It became the third party, it became this rump in the distant corner of the House of Commons. And I thought a lot of news coverage would drift away from the Liberal Party, and I was wrong. Um, you know, Bob Ray, uh, whatever you may think of his policies in his past, was quite adept at keeping the Liberal Party in, in the news. And then, of course, the leadership race assisted in that regard as well. So the Liberal Party didn't disappear, as many of us expected it to do, and the NDP moved up. It probably drives the NDP crazy, but the Liberal Party still gets as much, if not more, coverage than the NDP. All right. Also on your list of winners, Justin <clears throat> Trudeau for making Canadian politics interesting. He's keeping made Harper out of trouble? He's made some mistakes, he's made some missteps, as he's acknowledged, he's been forced to apologize about a couple of things, about Calgary and so on. But he, um, he obviously excites a lot of people, a lot of young people who have drifted away from voting and democracy and certainly from the Liberal Party are coming out in droves to see him. So whether you like him or not, you know, part of the job in politics is being a little bit exciting and making people interested. And so he's doing that. So he's assisting the Liberal Party and probably assisting himself. So he, I would say, is a winner for 2012. Um, he's making politics interesting, but you know, sometimes when I um, connect with some of my old friends in Ottawa, they tell me even in the time that you've left, the, the place has changed and politics really has changed. Um, you know, with the advent of social media and kind of instantaneous gratification of, you know, political sniping and so on. It's just a different game now, and um, a lot of people get the sense that it, it really is about being a celebrity, and that's why Justin gets attention. That's a very interesting point, because when he decided, actually before he decided to run, I was speaking to one of his friends, and I said, you know, it's going to be hard for him, and this person kind of poo-pooed it, and they said, oh, it's fine, you know, he's unconventional, sure, but so was his dad, and his dad did okay, and I said, but his dad didn't have the internet. Right to your point, it is a totally different world. Ottawa, in many respects, is is kind of boring. I think Harper has had the effect, you know, to his pleasure, of making it a bit more boring. But as you say, social media and the immediacy of news and the way in which it travels and the lack of filters that once existed has really changed it. And I think Justin, you know, is one of the many who's going to experience that in the new year. All right, on your list of losers, why are you picking on Vic Taves? I, well, he had, to, he had to fold like a cheap suit on his internet uh, surveillance bill. He got a lot of his fellow conservatives mad at him, not just new Democrats and liberals, got a lot of citizens mad at him. And he just seems to get into a lot of trouble. And I know he's a fellow Manitoban, but yes. uh, you know, I, I think all of us had heard that he was a lock for that Manitoba Queen, Court of Queen's Bench or Superior Court position, yes. and that it didn't happen. And I think the principal reason why something like that doesn't happen in Ottawa is you displease the Prime Minister. And I think Vic, for a whole variety of reasons, some of which were his fault and some of which were not, was in the news for all the wrong reasons. And at a certain point, a Prime Minister says, you know what, you are just kind of, you know, uh, taking on a bit too much water, and I think we're going to have you cool it for a bit. 
Maybe. Maybe. I, I'm not convinced that he actually wanted that job. You know, like being on the bench, as noble as it is, it's pretty boring. Um, you know, you're looking at case law and you're issuing judgments and you're not in the media and it's that's going to be a difficult transition. But you to go. can't be fired. That's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> and, you know, they um, make a lot of dough. And okay. So. It's true. Okay, Bev Oda. For existing, ouch, Warren, that's cruel. Uh, yeah, but I'm a not nice person. 60 <laughs> for forever. Whatever this woman achieved in her political career, and it was a fairly lengthy one, she will be forever member, remembered for $16 orange juice and spending money on limousines and changing hotels you know, over to the Savoy so she could smoke. And, um, you know, she charged the taxpayer for those things and didn't pay it back until she got caught. And that was appropriately the end of her career. And I think, you know, we got to give credit to Harper for doing that. It was another kind of Vic Tay's example is, you know, at a certain point, uh, I'll defend you, but I'm not going to defend you to the point where you're hurting the team. And he threw her overboard. Uh, the NDP for picking the wrong leader. Jack, you know, in fairness to them, Jack Layton, um, you know, obviously achieved a historic win for the NDP and then sadly passed away. And so it was always going to be tough for Thomas Mulcair to be as likable and as, as respected as Leighton was. But he's been a real, it's been lunch bag letdown with this guy. And it's not just because he wears a beard, and I'm against politicians wearing <laughs> beards. Uh, he is uh, just not Jack Leighton. He's just not very effective. And that's why you see this extraordinary spectacle of an unelected backbench liberal MP becoming much more popular in a much shorter period of time than Thomas Mulcair. You know, Justin Trudeau, in a head-to-head -head contest between the two of them, the polls tell us that, that Trudeau would clobber Mulcair. So I think that uh, the NDP probably is having a bit of buyer's regret right about now. Yeah, I mean, for all the, the nasty things that are said about Justin Trudeau and whether or not he's an intellectual light lightweight, I suppose the jury perhaps is still out on that. But if he can bring your party together, which is the one thing your party really needs, because that's what has been killing it for what the better part a of a decade. decade now, a decade. Um, is to bring people together, then he will deserve some credit for that. Thomas Mulcair does not strike me as having it fundamentally within his political DNA mm -hmm. as somebody who even wants to bring people together. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that that's what he's about. Yeah. Um, so some fair points on your part, if you ask me. I wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year Happy to you. Happy New Year. And uh, another very successful year ahead with you. Hope More so. books and you to too. Thank you, Warren. He is the Liberal Bad Boy strategist, Warren Kinsella, joining us here in our Toronto studio.